seconds in three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Good, Bad, or Bullshit. Uh, I am Crofton Steers, the main key and most important host of this podcast, the Spider-Man of this podcast, if you will. With me are my two uh, almost as important co-hosts. I'm talking about uh, the rhino of this podcast, Bo Schwartz. Bo, welcome. Wait, I thought I was the black Sp- Spider-Man. Nope, you're a rhino. And the vulture of this podcast, I'm talking about cranky old man Mike Hodgins. Vulture, I'll take it. Do you know a vulture can have enough botulism in its stomach that would kill an entire village? But the vulture's like, whatever, I like me some botulism. I did not know that. Well, now you do. Yes. Speaking of things that you guys don't know and now will know because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get this plug in off the top. I just launched a a new show. Uh, it's with neither of you guys. It's with another guy named Ryan Murphy. He does the Gamers In. It's called uh, Dungeons and Diapers, and it's about uh, taking care of of your kids as a parent of young kids and balancing a geek lifestyle, a hobbyist lifestyle, all that sort of <laughs> stuff. So uh, I'm not very good at it. Ryan seems to be better, so I'm trying to learn from him about how to do that. But uh, for uh, those of you who like this show, uh, you might like that show. So Dungeons and I, Diapers. I'm going to check it out because. I actually and sometimes as as a parent and you guys talk about you know you talk about games you're playing and some of these games are like you know you hear people especially Ryan Murphy I see on his Twitter feed you know he's playing all these games and you'll tell me some games that's like an 80 hour game and I'm like 80 hours <laughs> like and I think I only have one kid and I, I cannot do anything so maybe there will be some tips if Ryan Murphy's managing I to think, fit in some substantial problem, gameplay I think the problem with you Mike is you involve yourself in your child's life to Oh, okay. So that's probably the key. It's like yeah. ignore sure your, your partner does all child rearing stuff so that you can have an active. I mean, game you know, life. you can play games with your child, although I think your children are not old enough for it yet. But what you can no. do is say, no, you they should... are technically. So here's the deal: it's just, <laughs> just not enough. You're a responsible parent. And then I, I'm, I'm skipping way ahead. But Gwen and I are playing Super Mario uh, Odyssey together, and that game is amazing for playing with. Are you sure kid. that's a good idea for a four-year-old? Oh man, she loves it. I, I love it. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, like I'm it. not gonna be on your side on this if you want to dig deep. Yeah, and I don't. I mean, I don't know no, much no, except that I'm I not gonna be like on Mike's I, side with this. I think, I think, get them while they're young. You know, if, or if you're passionate about something, share your passions with your children. I don't. Oh I don't wait, whose side are you on here? It I'm on Crofton's like, side. It's not oh, too perfect. young. I mean, okay, yeah, you know, hold off on that. Gears of War, but there are plenty of games you can play. Oh, that's I, next. It's a co-op game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Think of the uh, things she'll learn. No, I mean, but, I don't I don't know. I just know that there's some things, you know, like your kid shouldn't smoke weed until they're like 20, and they shouldn't drink alcohol until they're yeah, like weed 13. and alcohol are not even close to games in terms of. I, look, I don't know, but there is like screen time should be limited for children. I I that, didn't say anything. Why? I just said they're going to be I looking at their screens that. eighty hours a week when they're older. Anyway, I, I would rather her be sitting on the couch next to me playing the hat in Mario than I would her sitting watching like a show for half an hour. You know? How much like, she so... going outside or something? Yeah, but that's a false that equivalence, right? Like that's right. being like, oh yeah, the, it, it, I'm saying if you're going to have a set amount of screen time, like. It, if it if it's doing something interactive with your father or sitting down and watching a show by yourself, like I mean, and it's rare that I actually like. I'll be honest, a lot of the kid shit that I do with my kid, I don't I don't enjoy as much as that I would like to enjoy. Like when I was a kid, I loved pretending. So she got these Playmobiles, and she likes to play pretend mermaids with me, and we do that sometimes. But man, it's killer. She she had wants to do it all her way i've got to do it her way and at one point it's just like i after like half 20 minutes half an hour of playing mermaids i'm just like i can't take this anymore i want to i, 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 I mean, kill I'm myself same, i'm in the same boat i feel like when i was a kid i loved being a kid i could do all that stuff but i'm an adult now and i'm just like i got little tolerance for the the kid play stuff i try yeah. i'm there i'm present but i'm like 
this is boring. I need to read the newspaper or do something that you thought well, was boring. Well, I it's it's so weird, eh? It's such it's such a anyway that the coming out the of whole it. podcast is about stuff like that. It's conversations like that. It's how you make that stuff cool. work. So I think you should have um, Mike uh, guest I'm, I'm at one point. Check it out. What tempo? I think you should invite Michael on as a guest at one point. Oh, absolutely! Once we've done at least 150 episodes, we'll have <laughs> we'll have Mike on. Get him on so right. we'll, we'll be talking about college Mike. kind of entry fees yeah. at that point, or yeah. entry uh, whatever test scores. Yeah, no, definitely parents, and uh, we even got comments from people that have different nerd stripes or geek stripes than us. Like uh, there was uh, Jason Peppy, who's a mutual friend of ours, po- posted on uh, Facebook, and he goes to conventions, and I see this all the time, right? I don't go to conventions. We talked about conventions on the show, um, and like you know, comic cons and stuff like that. They require a lot of of work, like just for me to go out and see a movie is complicated, but to go to whole, uh, you know. Um, uh conference or whatever that's that's tough and to bring kids or to balance kids with that that's so there's a lot of different ways you can you can have your hobbies and and keep me a good guest on your show oh no i think so too for sure i think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that are hitting their 30s right now or late 20s or whatever 40s how old are you having kids whoa 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 look at my baby face (laughs) Um, (laughs) 30s a long time ago mister how uh, do you know uh, anyway, all I'm saying is that there's a lot of new young parents these days, like myself, that that could could use some guidance, and that's what I'm there to provide. Well, I would say Bo is not one of them, so let's stop boring him with his parent stuff and there. get to a random topic. That's true. Uh, okay, um, well, that's up to you, Mike. So I assume you're telling me that... Uh, yeah, I got the machine ready to go. Let's do it. There wasn't anything else you wanted to do before we started that thing? No. No, there wasn't anything we talked about uh, prior to the show that you maybe wanted to do. But all right, uh, let's say. Uh, oh, was there? Right, start it up. My miss. There you go. Okay. Yes. Going. The topic today is entitled The Disposable Culture. I think this means. Oh, sorry. Like, I, I thought you said the the topic today was the entitled. No, but it's it was entitled, it was entitled the disposable titled, culture. The disposable culture. And that's like, were we talking about like, is that throwing stuff away? Like, you know, disposable. Uh, uh, okay. Stuff? Well, I think it's kind of loosely defined, and I don't think this is one that we're going to be easily able to look up because maybe it's there somewhere. But my sense of it is, is the way my dad put it. He's like, next generation, they don't have values. They throw everything out. It's a garbage. You live in a garbage culture. Everything's garbage. You know, that, so t- the- that TV that, that stops working right, you don't take it to repairman and fix it. You just throw it out and buy a new one. Everything's trash. And so we have a culture of everything's trash and things aren't worth fixing. And yeah, like I don't, I, 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 I don't have a lot of possessions. I like to live possession light. I think possessions uh, tie me down. And so I'm trying to think of all the things that I own that I would want to fix over, buy and replace. And I feel like it's probably zero. That you would like to fix? That if it broke down or ceased functioning, that I would opt to buy a replacement over fixing. And so I can kind of see, hmm, I'm part of the disposable culture. You know, but um, it's funny because, like, yeah, I can see your dad's point, and I'm a person who does like to fix things when I can. But a lot of stuff these days, you know, we're in this, like, technological revolution, have been for the past 20, 30 years, more, uh, where it's like, you know, stuff that you that breaks now uh, is, like, you can't just fix. Like, like, my iPhone right now is getting old, so, like, the the battery is total garbage and i'm like i guess I, I could i could learn how to fix it I, i'm sure i could take it maybe to have a new battery replace but generally it's getting old now and and kind of buggy too so then it's like well i'll just get a new phone i don't know if i can if i can fix this thing or not but like you know if you're talking like culture like your dad's where like you have an mm-hmm. axe mm-hmm. you know and the handle gets all rotten and then the handle breaks you get a new axe handle fit it in your, your axe is as good as new sure that's like that's simple you know that's like analog yeah. stuff easy to fix even even like old older technology was kind of you could work with it a little bit 
Mm-hmm. Um, but some of the stuff these days is super complicated. I mean, I remember like taking apart my 486 computer. My uncle was good with that stuff and put some new RAM in there. I know Bo, you do a little bit of that, but like with laptops and stuff or like an, or, or like an iPad, you're like, what are you going to take that apart and put a new thing in it? I mean, stuff is well, getting no, so, but that stuff designed so, to be, you know, a product that isn't easy to. Right. To so, fix, I mean, but... do you think that's. Yeah, but it's that is part of it. Like in a flat screen TV or something, right? You get your well, new that like super designed TV. To, for what do they call it? Planned, Planned obsolescence. Obsolescence. Yeah, like I think, I think that's part of the disposable culture. <laughs> is 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 in tandem with this idea that we'd rather purchase things. I I don't know which one came first, planned op- obsolescence or the knowledge by savvy business people that people that the next generation coming up didn't want to fix things. I don't know which camp comes first because I know that, I mean, if it was disincentivizingly expensive to, to replace things, that's when you want to fix it. But it's not people. I don't think earn a reliable living fixing a lot of the things that we need repairs, right? Like um, we were talking, I have a funny story actually. Uh, we had at, tell. at my job, we we're having this day where people from different departments open their doors and you walk around and find out what they do, you know, all within this <coughs> one unit or whatever. And anyways, I, part of what I was doing was I was presenting at a table for people or, you know, to other people internally say, Oh, what do you do? And I'd explain it to them now. <laughs> So in the morning, I uh, grabbed a pair of pants and a shirt and came into work. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to be presenting a bit, so I'll wear, I'll wear some khakis. I'll wear pants today. Yeah, I <laughs> usually wear shorts to work, um, to be honest. I'm, I'm really no frills when it comes to work. Those, days are, those frills days are behind me. But I um, put in... Um, pants or frills? <laughs> yeah, shorts all the way. You gotta be com- I don't want to sit at a desk. I don't want to sit at a desk in a, you know khakis or jeans even like i got drawstring beach shorts that's what i wear to work <laughs> comfortable comfortable yeah um but uh you know it's not the most professional thing and that's not a career goal of mine right now so uh, but it, i was presenting so i wanted to look halfway decent so i have a nice pair of khakis presentable toss those on uh wanted to have a nice morning in took a cabin to work that morning Got to the different building than I was usually go to. Got all set up and <laughs> walked down the hallway. And then the coworker was there with me. He's like, what happened to your pants? <laughs> and I turned around and like, this giant hole in the back of my ass. <laughs> 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 and luckily, I brought my shorts because after the presentation, I was going yeah. back to my desk job where I could wear my shorts and who gives a shit. So I just, luckily, I like back, I reversed my way into the bathroom and then, <laughs> thankfully, not very many people saw the, the back of my ass. And these were pants that, well, you know, they had run their course. And we were talking about it because we were having a laugh at work about, you know, it's funny. Um, and I was like, I guess I should get it repaired. And they're like, well, how much were the pants? And I was like, well, they're like $80. They were expensive pants. I got a few years use out of them, but they're done. Um they're like, well, it'll cost you like sixty dollars to fix it. You might as well just buy a new pair. Yeah. But there was a day and age where people, like when I was young, you repair jeans and pants all the damn time, or cut them into shorts. Yeah. And well, fix them up a little bit. I... And now I'm like, well, I guess they just go in the garbage. And the thing I heard about donating, uh, there was some videos going around recently that even donating to like Salvation Army, Saint Vincent de Paul, all these kinds of places. Um, they throw out a lot of clothes. They actually, a lot mm. of the stuff they get donated don't even get used. Like a large percentage go to the landfill anyways. Yeah, I'm, um, sure, about that. I'm sure of that. So, and I was just like, man, uh, these are perfectly good pair of pants. They're $80. They look nice. They fooled me. When I, I put them in the wrong place and pulled them out. It's too bad they got to go in the garbage. But, but it's funny. Like, I mean, you know, that that is kind of interesting story because I have a similar experience uh, these days. I, I think I'm getting old. Well, I, so that all my, my skin is just harder now. Cause like I get holes in the <laughs> knees of my pants. I think my, my knees are like okay. calloused or something. Like so like, so yeah. like I just get a hole, especially my right knee. Cause I'm always, I'm doing this kind of physical work. So I'm always bending down with my right knee. 
I get a hole in my pants. I get a new pair of pants, and like in six months, I got a hole in the knee. Right. Now, when I was in high school, I'd be like, sweet, finally got some holes in my knee, you know? Uh, <laughs> but but then it's like, so because they get literally like a bit threadbare because it's just getting pulled all the time, that area. Okay. And then it gets a hole in it. But I would, I would be like, okay, I would think about fixing it, but what are you going to do? Put a patch on it? You can't wear that to work with like a patch, you know, like a plaid patch on your on your pants. <laughs> I was right, gonna say right. like what exactly? What do you? Yeah. So so the thing is like you know it's one thing to fix something, but if if something is if the if the purpose of something in this case is like to look professional, uh, it's like well you can't put a patch on it. You can't really sew it up either. It's gonna look. It's always gonna look bad. And some things just do go run their course, right? Like you can't just. You know, you can't make a new, uh, an old thing new again. It can't be done. You can right. fix it to some degree. Yeah. I feel like things do run their course, and this is maybe somewhat of a different issue. Like, because, for example, like I, I, I like, I like a nice T-shirt, and my T-shirts or or whatever clothes in general basically go through a phase. Like, I'll buy them, and then I really like the T-shirt, and I wear it all the time. And it's kind of like my nice shirt. And then, and then I'll start to wear it when I'm doing a little bit of handyman work around the house and I get a bit of paint on it or something. And I'm like, okay, this shirt is not a good shirt anymore. I can't wear it like to a restaurant or whatever. And then it starts to become my work shirt. And I literally have work shirts. The other day I had this like this tie dye shirt I've been wearing for a long time that had holes in it, like holes all over it. And at one point it had a hole so big in the, in the back that it was bigger than the neck hole. That's how big it was. And when I went to take it off, it just ripped. And I was like, okay, this shirt is done. It <laughs> just finished. And and then, but I still have it because I'm using it now as a rag. Right. And then, and that's but see, act, I was going to actually... make that as a joke, how like this is going to keep going and keep going. Yeah, it's going to well, turn into a rag. Then it's my toilet paper. And then it's, a, you know, like. No, it's... rag, rag is the end of the line. <laughs> It doesn't, you don't go for the but 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 I have so I feel like I've been making good use of it. like could I fix that shirt I don't think so you know like it's you'd put a patch on it look terrible like some things you have to buy again I think yeah. it's more like like I wonder is part of this like you go to the coffee shop and you get you don't bring your mug you get a paper cup and then you throw it in the garbage is that part of what we're talking about you get your food in a styrofoam I, container I, and well th- i mean i guess that is that part different? of disposable culture but it's to me it's always it's centered on the lack of repairing to me what you just described is the opposite you wear it till it's run down you repurpose it i think the disposable culture is this idea that we just too lazy to fix things so we just throw them out oh or that that there is a, a corporate appetite to make money by making you you know get a new thing. The thing that I that I always point to and that we've already touched on a little bit are cell phones. Um, sure. My my wife and I just got new cell phones last year, and I totally did not need a new cell phone. She had one that was too big for her hand. She really wanted a new one, and our contract was up. And we need cell service. So essentially, we're going to be paying a monthly cell service. So we went to the to the store and we're like, okay, well, can we get Jesse a new phone? And they're like, well, you're both eligible. Here's brand new phones. And your bill is exactly the same. And if anything, I think it's a bit less now. Um, and the deal, the only deal is that we don't break the contract for the next two years. And we're paying off, I guess we're paying off these phones over the next two years. Hmm. But the problem, the problem with that is that, uh, I didn't need a phone. Now I traded in my phone for whatever that's worth. So maybe it got reused somewhere, but like, I didn't need a new phone, but I got one because why not? Like I'm, I'm paying for this internet. I need this, uh, or the, the self service, um we're we're in there and they're like you're eligible for this better phone for free Mm -hmm. just give us your phone and we'll give you this one and i'm like all right of course but like it's 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 planned that way so it's like that's the whole planned obsolescence element and so there's countless amounts of cell phones people getting cell phones that they don't need and then like yeah maybe there's trade-ins but maybe these parts are ending up in dumpsters or something i don't know they, I mean, to some extent, they probably are. People don't want an old phone. I mean, that's an interesting one where it's that's a clear case of. I mean, it's. I was gonna say want versus need. You know, you can make the the case that well, nobody needs a cell phone, and you can also 
easily make the case that in today's society, everyone does need a cell phone. And be, okay, so say everyone needs a smartphone in today's society. And like, I have one. Mine's like, a, what is it? An iPhone 5S or something? <laughs> that's what and, I have too. It's pretty old actually right now, I think. Yeah, everyone's saying like, some people are like, well, that's an old phone. I'm like, what? It's a smartphone. It does everything. It works fine. I got no problems with it. I have no desire to get a new phone except for, as I was mentioning, now I have to charge it like twice a day or else like it goes dead. Uh, you know, at noon, it's at 20%. But, so I'm like, okay, that's getting annoying. Like if I'm going to go do something using sure. it. So it's like, okay, now it's getting to the point where it's just not doing its basic needs. So at some point, and it's it's getting worse all the time now. So it's like, okay, well, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I guess I'll get a new phone. But, you know, your your example, Crofton, is interesting because it sounded like you didn't really need one or you weren't having technical things, but they were like, here, here's the thing. And look how shiny and new it is. And, you know, there is a lot of that in our culture culture where it's just like get the shiny new thing and everyone wants those things you know like if i because my battery's dying i'm starting to think i'm like oh a new phone will be cool you know i'm I'm sure i'll like it uh but it's kind of like trying to like i would i would go out of my way to try to avoid being exposed to that stuff just because i know it's there right you know you go to a phone store someone's gonna be like oh yeah we'll get you in the zero dollars and it's like twice as good as the phone you have and i'm like well i don't need it you know Right. So right. it's like I, I get the I don't need it thing, but like the whole point is that you are paying, you need phone service. You can't just have no phone service and a phone. So the idea is like if you're going to be paying, and this was what's so weird for me is like because I was paying on the same plan that was two years old, I could get a better phone service plan. So I ended up leaving the store paying less money than I do monthly, and getting a new phone. Um, and it wasn't the latest model necessarily because I would have had to put a hundred dollars to get the latest model, you know, zero dollars and you get them, but there's no real reason for me not to get that phone. And they know that like, I would be, it would just be me being like, Oh, I don't need this. So I'm, I'm not going to get it, but why I'm paying, I, I need the cell service. I'm going to keep paying them the money. So they, it's all planned so that so that I'm hooked on for two more years. The, yeah, the luxury I mean, that I would you, have, the only option would, would be, it was it would allow me to go to different providers and lock in there and they give me, a, you know, you can't you can pay get, month to month, I guess, somewhere. But. Well, yeah, you you can get, like, I mean, my phone ran out of a contract and I, like, like an idiot kept paying the, the pr- price because there is, an, there is a portion in that contract that's supposed to be repaying the phone. And I definitely got, because I just was threatening to leave and they offered me a new phone uh and i just but then they ended up just cutting like 30 bucks a month off my phone bill because i'm under no contract and i'm not paying off a phone anymore so it did get a cheaper rate but it wasn't like they weren't you know they didn't i had to i had to threaten to leave to get that they they were all like oh here's a new phone and we'll get you more megs and i was like no i just want i'm not on a contract anymore so you can get that but it's certainly not what they're offering and i think that's part of the whole like again disposable culture to be like no no, throw out your old thing get the new one because selling these phones like like the whole cell phone industry for sure is tied to contracts people paying off new phones all the time and it's like no like if someone made a phone uh, you know, it lasted 20 years and, and always worked, you know, wouldn't we all want that? But I guess the reality is, again, with, with technological advance, any phone oh, you have yeah. now or okay. a piece of technology in 10 years is going to be like, totally antiquated. I mean, it's, keep in mind that these are, um, we're talking about phones. Yeah, maybe we but, should get well, on this. No, 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 that's not the problem. It's that, I mean, it, we're talking about phones. Like, phones haven't really advanced. Cellular phones... I mean, I'm sure there's advancements in oh, technology. Oh, they've advanced that... a lot. The phone part? Uh... I mean, there's been advancements for sure. <laughs> but it's mostly just there's more megapixels yeah, what in the camera. Saying. He means the, the actual a, calling there's function. There's a better processor in it so you can play whatever shitty game you're playing on the bus. Well, or, you know, like, like a lot has happened on the back end. It's a manufactured this, but... need. Like, I'm not trying to beat old crank about it, but like, if a phone was just a phone then you'd buy the phone and probably it'd be fine for 20 years or something. They can build them that way and then make them just the phone part. The problem with disposable culture in relation to the phone example is that there's an artificial um, need 
as a, as a fashion and also as a computing device accessory that we fetishize, that the industry has created. And the, there's a, isn't there an Apple, a new Apple um, keynote today even? Like well, every year people go nuts and it's like a new product. And it's like, well, that means the old stuff does get thrown out because it's worthless. And But it's, yeah. it's not worthless. It's, no, it's, it's designed it's true. to be that way. And so, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, no, that I, definitely affects the culture in terms of electronics. Yeah, it, it does. I mean... Yeah, I know. I see what you're saying because, because like the the main leap, which was putting everything into one device, you know, that happened basically ten years ago. Now that's not that long, uh, long enough. And now they've just been improving them ever since. Uh, but I mean, there, you know, with that particular thing, you know, because because then also the disposable culture, like you get a phone, right? And then you're like, okay, well, here's my digital camera. Let's throw that in the trash, uh, and uh, my like laptop you don't even necessarily need that depending on what you're doing everything's in one little device and i see that there's some efficiencies with that i mean the idea i guess that the future is always bringing something better as part of like where we're at like get ready for the next thing mm. and there isn't that kind of cultural drive to preserve things of the of the of the past but do right. you think that that is something we should be doing i mean it's We've been, we've been hung up talking about like kind of like advanced technologies like phones, flat screen TVs, computers, but the same is true of say f even like furniture and stuff. Well, that's what I mean. Electronics is the easy go to, but we're talking about everything. And yeah. to me, the big, the big, but, the big guilty parties in disposable well, cultures, not electronics, than, because like the electronics, I think, are in some sense recyclable. I know you can turn those in. Um, for recycled parts that they do get used for this purpose. Um, and also, a lot of them, like in the phones examples, they're not designed to be easily repaired either. But furniture no. is, clothing should be. There's a lot of stuff where in generations past, I mean, you'd fix, you'd quilt up blankets that were shredded. You, you, you'd, you know, clean your mattresses and keep them and not buy new ones. Like, like there's there's a lot that goes into a landfill that isn't just electronics. In fact, well, I, they say yeah. in Cuba, like they because they couldn't get new cars in. They say the cars. best mechanic you possibly could have is a Cuban mechanic, because because essentially they they would pass cars down from generation to generation and keep them together with like duct tape and string or whatever, sure. right? So sure. like, I mean, they that, might not pass the safety, but I would argue. I I wouldn't be on the side of this argument, but I would argue that the need. For, for increased regulation and safety it, it, with a lot of products also means when they're unsafe, they go into the landfill. <laughs> it's part of what it's part of what, you know, uh, continues us on this snowball to disposable culture. So I, yeah. I guarantee you those Cuban cars probably wouldn't pass the safety in, in, in Canada. Uh, well, no, they, they wouldn't. But like, so there, there's a couple of things that play here. One of them is cultural. And one of them is just like, the laws of physics like uh things decay you know it's well, like sure. the second law of thermodynamics like like stuff and there's more like, of us on the earth owning things as our population well, yeah grows. so like car i mean cars are interesting because like in in the climate we live in especially with, with salt on the roads like cars rust mm -hmm. you know so it's like it's like could those cubans keep the cars going here if they were salting roads like i, I don't know i mean maybe uh, it does take mm -hmm. a lot of work to 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 maintain these things and then there's also the, the other thing is the cu the cultural aspect and I'll, I'll share a story with you with you guys that is sort of relevant to this so um andrea's uh uncle just passed away on monday oh i'm sorry uh, to hear that yeah very s sad story he had uh he oh, had a brain a brain tumor and it happened very quickly and um he's uh he's doctor assisted deaths so we, which was his choice and he was it was a very sad event but oh, wow. you know he ended his life the way he wanted to in any case, he was a man who was very, uh, he really cared about the past and genealogy and family heirlooms. So his home is filled with these family heirlooms, these chairs and and furniture and plates and stuff like this. And even long before he was ill, he would say to Andrea, like, you know, if you'd ever want one of these chairs. <clears throat> and we went to visit him and his house is very, it was very beautiful to look at in one respect. But completely not my style. Like, yeah. like, like. I remember sitting in one chair, and he was like, "He's very proper man." He was like, "Michael, you're sitting in in one of the oldest chairs in Ontario." He's like, "This is an 1840s ladies chair." And I remember thinking, like, "Okay." And I'm, and in my head, I was thinking, <laughs> like, "It's really ugly and it's uncomfortable." 
and then, and then and then so like at some point like it came on offer because he was as he's age as he was aging he wanted people in the family to take these chairs and andrew and i were talking was like man i i don't like these chairs and then he would talk about like what the significance this was in the family you know and, and they're in good shape and stuff like that but then you know i kept thinking about and my, my dad's the same way too i have some he has some old like your great grandmother owned this like wardrobe and again i look at him like it's hideous <laughs> like i don't right. want it yeah. uh, and then i'm like so why should you be bound by like the style choices? Like if my great grandmother, who I never knew, went to whatever general store, or whatever existed in that time, and said, "Oh, I like this ornate wardrobe. I'll buy it," and then why do I have to be stuck with her personal taste choices here 150 years later? Right. So so then you end up getting because like I could you know we could fill our our house with furniture from my family and Andrea's family that's like 100 years old, and I would dislike all of it. And they'd be like, yeah, what's going to happen to it otherwise is going to go in a landfill. And it's like, well, I mean, why do I have to, to keep it? I don't I don't like this stuff. You know, there's a certain cultural thing of, you know, you want your home or your or who you are uh, or, you know, your style to reflect who you are, too. So, uh, you, you, you know, you can always keep and fix things, but sometimes it's just like you're, you're living with other people's decisions all the time and right. reflecting other trends that are not around anymore and like when i bought this house i came with this came with this 100 year old couch and i used it for like two years and everyone who saw it was like that is a really ugly cloud it was like puke green color like <laughs> it was just horrible and i was like i i even thought maybe i reupholster it and i like it's just as ugly and there's something that was gonna do that was not gonna make it ugly and eventually it went into trash that thing had a good life but i don't feel bad about it because i didn't like it and then we got new new couches and they're not. And we really like them. <laughs> it makes me happy to sit in them, you know. So well, that, I don't know. That's another. That's another thing about our. Would say as I would say would be a criticism from people outside of our generation into our generation and younger, is that we care about being happy, right? Like as a con, like before, you know, like th th that's a value. Before it was like just suffering. That's well, what life it was. Is. It's just suffering. You know, suffering's part of it, and you know, suffering grows character. And like, yes, we all want to be happy, but the world's a hard place. So you stoically shoulder burdens, and you stoically um, set aside your whining and complaining about. Oh, I don't like the color of my couch. It makes me unhappy. Like that's what fucking babies do. Like that's an attitude from, uh, from uh, not from people from my generation that I hear, but from from an older generation from a certain personality type who really feel that way who feel that it's very entitled <laughs> it's very you know spoiled to be like you should be fucking lucky you have a couch that's a blessing <laughs> and we look at it and go like fucking couches i got a couch tree out back and go buy 10 at fucking uh ikea tomorrow like couches whatever you know we don't appreciate those things and that, again i think that's where the disposable culture pejorative comes in because like Look at you and your happiness and your happily colored couch, Mike. Well, like, well, there's go the fuck yourself, aspect. you spoiled little brat. Like, <laughs> there's <laughs> also know? other factors. Like, like this particular couch, like on two of the cushions had brown stains on them, which were turned upside down. I don't know what the cause of those stains were, and I probably don't want to know what the cause of those stains <laughs> oh, were. Shit. And then it's, it's I also have shit. a cat which scratched that up really good. So it was all completely threadbare. And if I think of some of the couches I had as a kid growing up, where when I had a dog and you have kids around who like puke on stuff, like I definitely had couches that had been, like, I puked on it. My brother puked on it. The dog, multiple dogs. <laughs> on, like that couch is nasty, nasty. And I just imagine your dad sitting on this, like, urine soaked like stinking pile of couch with patches all over and be like you entitled young people and your non piss smelling the, couches it's not like, that they'd <laughs> sit on the piss couch it's that they'd haul out and get cleaner and clean the fucking thing you lazy bastard you can't clean then <laughs> reupholster it reupholster it do anything yeah. but buy a new couch you entitled little boy that's that's the attitude i mean <laughs> That's I've been hearing that all my life from my father, and I know he's probably the only one out of our parents. Your dad drives around like a brand new goddamn but, truck. He's one to talk. I can't say he doesn't have. I can't look at him and say, "No, you're highly inaccurate." When I turn around and look, and everyone's throwing out their shit, like he's but, like, but I mean, that makes me mad. But I'm like, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Well, he he's definitely not wrong. But like, I mean, the broader the broader aspect of this is just consumer culture, which like I'm a hundred percent on board. 
with him or anyone think like, like we live in a culture that's just like buy more stuff always always more stuff buy and that's bad and and that that i think is holding hands with this disposable thing the more sh- stuff you just you throw away or it's meant to break the more you got to buy new stuff uh, they're tied together i i think that there is some balance of like you know um stuff has a, has a shelf everything has a shelf life you know um even your technology like at some point like you know you have like old memory storage stuff that just will be corrupted it just won't work anymore eventually like some the you know things will corrode inside tech uh, your computer at some point it just will not work because things have a shelf life so there's that and it's balancing that with the like acquisition of new things when you really do not need them yeah. and i think that there is there's a gray band in there when you can make that decision to right. be like look this couch is 100 years old it, it served its purpose it's mm-hmm. horrible no one likes it. it's uncomfortable the stuffing's coming out you could restuff it or just get a new one. you know and, and i think everyone has to figure out where that balance is but cult like i think you're right like society is way too far on the throw the thing out and get a new one i agree with that mm. yeah. like i mean yeah i mean i feel like going for this Crofton. Yeah. Crofton, you want to add anything to this? Uh... Well, I've tried about eight times. I I'll, I can go now. Um, so, so here's the thing. I find that disposable culture as a topic is something that, that lends itself to sort of negative connotations. Like you're disposable, you know, you think maybe and, and throw on our entire culture and it makes it sound, I don't know, fairly negative, yeah. but I, and I am one who has had very poor experiences with electronics in particular. I got like this new wafer thin TV on my wall. I get, I get it. I'm so excited. Mike here helped me set it up. We were all happy and then uh, immediately fails. And I go back to the store. I bring it in and they, no questions asked or like, Oh yeah, bro. You know, one out of five of them pretty much don't work. Here's a new one, right? And it has all the highest reviews on the website. And I'm like, all right. And then, How much then was I put it, it up. Roughly, if you don't it, mind me asking. Pardon me? How much was the TV, the value? Like $2,000. Okay. So, so, um, so, yeah, they give me another one. I bring it back in the car, set it up. What? No problem. Everything is great. Um, everything I buy seems to like fail on first try or fail closely thereafter. So I'm very frustrated by that. And in the old days, people would be like, oh, in the old days, your TV last, you'd get, you know, your black and white TV it would last you a zillion, zillion years. And I get that. However, the, the other part of the uh, equation is innovation. And like Mike was just talking about how recent the smartphones things are and how like they haven't been around for that long. Just the leap in technology and televisions and not just in picture image and quality uh, and lighting and stuff like that, but in, you know, uh, everything from the, the smart TVs to the, the size of the TVs, like just in the past 10 years, it's just leaps and bounds. And part of the reason that it's like that is that disposableness because people move on. Okay. We're going to get the next thing, the next thing. If things stayed static, then innovation would at a certain point stifle, you know, if there isn't a market to fill it. Uh, and, and yeah, you might have a, a half decent thing. Like your iPhone five might, might last for 15 years, but then we have no, no, advance, no, I, I understand you know? what you're saying in the electronics industry and some other industries, this perpetual purchasing funds, workforces and research and development teams and product engineers, it, it keeps them going. It keeps the businesses incentivized and healthy on a stock market. Like it's a self-perpetuating engine. Like that's, everyone knows that it's just we if this the self-perpetuating engine and we might get into capitalism here is of itself held by many people as a fundamental good does this company make money good are we not making money why well everyone has their product and the product is very sturdy so i guess that means our job's done and we stop making money is that an acceptable answer hell no let's make 0.2 or 2.0 of whatever we're doing because of you know the disposable culture part of it is it's it's fueled by this and it's a self-perpetuating engine it's a snake eating its own tail that gets worse and worse and somewhere along the road someone has to say hey the shit we're doing it's is it is it have a long-term bad effect for the environment 
does it have a long-term bad effect on the quality of the human character and, and how we treat one another like you know I, I don't i don't personally think that um that the things that we're preaching and teaching to people line up with their actual actions we're always talking about you know be what you are practice what you preach and so you know if we're telling people um to be persons of character and of quality i don't think looking at everything necessarily and saying ditch it and abandon it on the first problem is <laughs> there's like a dissonance there in terms of what we're saying and how we're living and i think that comes at a cost to us spiritually I think it does. And I, I love I, innovation. I, and I, 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 I kind of disagree I, with that. I, I, I love things innovation. Things I love it's innovation. Not like you're throwing away people. I love throwing things out. I am a lazy fuck with a lot of stuff. But I definitely know in doing this, I don't practice the kind of integrity that I respect in, in people and, and in things. Like, there's a definite dissonance there. And that, that kind of stuff, you know, does, I don't know, weighs on me. It, everyone's different, but I look at it and go like, that, that's, that's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I hear what you're saying, Bo, and I'm, I'm on, I think, the same page mostly. And, you know, with, the, with the, the argument about innovation, which is, you know, some people would say it's, it's a pretty valid argument or certainly a, an argument that resonates with a lot of people, the more the drive for this stuff, look at the advance of technology. And, and this is, this is true, but when you're saying that, you know, it does drive this stuff, but it's, it's all like sort of, yeah, you know, it's like a better TV or better phone or like better graphics on your game. You know, we all want that stuff. We like it. It's good. But, and it drives, you know, it drives innovation, you know, another technology, but these are all like consumer goods. And again, this is the engine of capitalism. Mm -hmm. But then I think of like areas of the world, big areas of the world where we do no innovation. Like if you think about like our like our political systems or the way governance works, like or there's been f- no hardly any innovation done in this sphere at all. How about food you know, production? Like, <laughs> well, like well, we got to find a way to get more people fed in a healthy manner. And I mean, there has been innovation with that, but yeah, certainly it's yeah, not. It's not, not healthy food by production. The, the same, yeah, yeah engine of 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 this throwaway consumer goods so like like i think there's so much room for like if people if these smart people designing products and stuff were were turning their attention to things like like social innovation or like uh how to make people's lives better like how to get people more involved in, in like political discourse or things like there's not much innovation that happens there and i think and i mean i think that there is there is room for stuff there and but instead, I think you know, what I'm not you mean saying... to say there's lots of innovation happening there. I think what you're saying is, it's of, it's no, not, it need, it's of little needs, relative there's value. For innovation. Like there's there's reasons why there's no innovation spheres like power, protecting power, all that sort of stuff. There's yeah, reason, but it, and it does, yeah, those are reasons. It but doesn't, doesn't have anything happen. to do with being a disposable culture. I don't think. Well, like, no, and I wasn't necessarily trying to make to make the leap that those things are connected. I don't. I, I, so yeah, I, your point to me is is fair there. I'm not saying that uh, that because we all want new TVs, we're not changing our political systems. I don't. Yeah, I, and, and I, I, I wasn't think, trying to make that connection, but right. I just mean that that like this. It, it's it's true that that we up we put it on a pedestal. This like new technology, and it's like we look at the tech industry and and you know all these like tech platforms and and again what all they're doing is like selling you shit or figuring out ways to sell you shit like twitter and facebook all these organizations which are considered innovative and new their whole purpose is to is to know how to how to sell you shit that's all they're for we all know this you know this is not news to anyone it's all stuff i don't know what? It's all consumer products, really. Well, yeah, it's all about consumer products. So that all this new stuff that, like, we live in this age, you know, and, and but everyone to tell you, like, Facebook and Google and the like are just collecting information about you so that they can better target ads to make you buy the stuff again. And it's like, and again, these are the, these are the places where innovation is happening in the world, and we hold we uphold it. But again, I think I think that that stuff is all tied into the disposable culture because it's all about the engine of capitalism. How do you get people to buy more shit? quickly 
and, and keep growth going. Right. And, I, and I'm not but, saying it's tied to the other. I'm just saying it's not a good thing. I'm well. See, here's the thing. Like before, entirely just crashing on capital writ large as a concept, uh, and saying like that that it's you know responsible for necessarily all the ills here. I I will say there are some good things that come out of it, and one of the things is innovation. And yes, it is because of consumer goods. Uh, and, and the disposable culture element of it could lead to great leaps in innovation quickly. And that's something that I could see as a positive. And, and like, if you take a look at something like a Tesla car, right? So it, if, if the first generation of Tesla car, um, you know, could, could, could run very slowly, but hold the battery charge forever. And they, and they never made another version of that car. They never improved down on it then then you know like a select amount of people would buy it they'd run it into the ground and that would you know that would be that but like the fact that they release new bottles that they try to improve and then sell you know sell to yes a market marketplace uh i i think that that leads to a net positive with all the 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 inventions that come in the creating these new cars or creating these new systems creating these new vehicles if science and innovation didn't have this commercial output it wouldn't it wouldn't be going as as full tilt as i guess it is right now are there also tons of other issues with that yes but i I do think one of the positives of having a more disposable culture is things advance quicker i I, yeah i i I just want to say, I don't think we're shitting on capitalism. I think we're just looking for cause and effect. Like, well, it, I'd say uh, I am no, shitting on capitalism. Well, we, know that's your, we, that. we know that's your and, bent, and that's going to be what it is. But I don't think that's the – I mean, it's not the point we're trying to drive home. I just think it's hard well, to have that conversation I, without it because it's a correlation of cause and effect. The, the scarcity of the product – is in direct correlation with our incentive to repair it over buy it over throwing out the old. Yeah, but again, you, with and part is of not wrong co- about the innovation part. It's just there's a balance in the middle there, and I think we're too far in one way. And it isn't. Let's you know, it isn't to shit on capitalism, but it's to say like unchecked capitalism and innovation results in garbage. Well, and I would also say the innovation, like though it it spurs innovation, it does it spurs. It doesn't spur innovation as a, as a whole. It spurs, it spurs innovation, innovation, innovation in commercial products. It doesn't. Sp- yes, in it's... in a very narrow direction. Right. Innovation is spurred on where someone's likely to buy something, not on, you not know, it's on a whole, developing like, uh, better farming practices in order to well, make just, sure that we get change. healthier like, like, food look, at a at a more affordable rate, and feed but more forget people. About, like, forget about food because that actually that's has a, had. That's not a commercial product, and it's a place that innovation would definitely be welcome. We have a no, no, but in innovation, food. there has been a lot of innovation in food systems for sure. But I would say climate change been. is a perfect example. There has, yeah, we could, we could, but but climate change is a perfect example because there's nothing there to buy, and that's why we cannot address this problem because capitalism can't solve that problem because there's no one to buy the thing we have a hard time thing, people getting people to recognize it's even a problem we can't well, even create but, the market but, for it again so the thing is that, and again this is all tied to things like so this innovation that happens is great and some people you know are trying to do to, to do some some positive there but the machine is not about what's it's not driving innovation towards the good it's driving into what's saleable uh and and what's useful to people who have something to sell uh there is innovation that happens in other sectors but that's not where the drive is and but the, but, but there is stuff to sell to combat climate change there's tons you know, of stuff like what? that tesla what? car electric cars and stuff like that that's the exact thing that i just mentioned that's not I mean, really no it it is it is 100 percent linked the people that are interested in buying those cars may be concerned about emissions and trying to reduce their you know emissions. what a tesla costs uh, it's, I know it's very expensive. It's a but, luxury vehicle right yes. now. Yes, and, and I will tell you that that, I mean, it, that's like a it's a false narrative that because anyone who can afford to buy a Tesla, I guarantee their carbon footprint is through the roof compared to someone who's buying a Honda Fit. Like, but, or, so a thing pre, is, or a Prius or whatever. Like, well, I yeah, mean, look, like, there are, there are things that that happen, but I, I do th- again, the disposable culture doesn't have conscience. It just has. Let's make new stuff because people want it. I would and argue we can Tesla money. is like an exception to the the rule. Like, I mean, even it, even no, let's just assume uh, like Prius, let's just assume uh, Tesla is Bolt, okay like... and is an example of innovation in a, a positive direction. 
I can name more negative, <laughs> more things that don't address the positive outcomes like climate. Uh, My, Mike's argument the is that there's nothing to sell with regards to fighting climate change. I just disagree no, with that. I, I, think I don't a think it's a, I don't think it's a right market. Money it's not a right market in comparison to things that aren't. <laughs> like I, well, I, you know, and and I, the problem is again disposable culture, throwing shit away. The fact that something addresses climate change doesn't mean we're not buying new Teslas every year and throwing them in the garbage. Yeah, it, so, and that's again, it, yeah, it, that's why I think it's a false, it's a false narrative too to, to say that because again, like people, um, you know, will have a car. Like, like I thought, you know, I was caught in this trap myself just recently because we used to have incentives in Ontario to buy an electric car, and I was thinking about it because it's like, you know, people should get an electric car. I have a car that works fine. You know, it, it's like if I if I ditch it or it goes in the landfill. You know the, the the combined like carbon that went into making that car or making the new car, uh, it would be better off to keep the one that exists. And and you know the the real choice should be like don't drive. I, and I know the, there's a whole other thing, but the cons but the consumer culture and disposable culture wants you to get the new and better, longer range electric car that's going to come out in five years, and for sure those people will buy those new ones. And that's not helping anything. Like, but you can't ever buy anything that's going to help that problem. And and that's a what big about problem. a bicycle? Uh, you better to ride one that already exists. I mean, but, you, but there's, there's a limit. Choices. There's a limit. There's better choices, right? I, I, all I, all I'm saying is that I think that saying that there's like to be like you can't buy anything because that's in some way going to affect climate change. That that argument to me is not uh, a clear argument that you can't buy that that there aren't certain products that are tailored to people that want to have an effect on climate change like you can make money your argument was that you can't make money off climate change i would i would very much say that that you can right, it, and that it can spur innovation yes and i think those things are true i just think that like when, when i was saying the other the other areas where we could should be innovated innovating in are not ones that are driven by consumer culture or capitalism for that matter there's not much innovation again happening in the political realm like you know if you think about our political systems they're like hundreds of years old and they're slow to change and no one really cares because it's too hard you know uh, we're getting stuck you know, on an argument about innovation we are and, and it, i don't want to get it, too hung up on this the stuff. only point that, that makes innovation is that there's a formula with the amount of iterating and innovating we do to the amount of garbage we produce whether or not it's good innovation or bad innovation doesn't or you know whatever your opinion is on it the correlation is the more shit we produce, the more garbage we make. I think that's just the underscore there. And that's like in, in, in the conversation, which is focused on, do we have a culture that has excessive garbage that treats things without respect? Um, See, because that's they don't different value than what objects. we've been talking about. But that's, that no, that's what I've been like... talking about the whole time. <laughs> No, because at the beginning we asked about stuff like containers at McDonald's and all that sort of stuff, and you said no, none of that counts. Right? No, like, I'm talking not... about all the fucking mattresses that get thrown out, and all the fucking couches that get thrown out, and all like we we got really hung up on electronics, and electronics is the least of it. Like it's the all the furniture, all the 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 broken your fence breaks. You just tear the whole thing down and put up a new one instead of just patching it up because everyone wants a pristine looking lawn like all, all right shit okay well if yeah. we're opening that pandora's box then let's talk about the great conveniences that come with disposable culture right because like i wanted to be and this is for uh, uh, dungeons and diapers perhaps but i wanted to be a cloth diaper person uh and and there's have, a great like, cloth, example cloth cloth diapers on my kids and all this and we started you know trying but our kid was really really uh, underweight, um, our, our first child, and the, even the smallest of these cloth diapers wouldn't wouldn't stay on her. So then we switched to disposable, and then next thing you know, we're just like, wow, this is whatever, this is way easier. God, this is nasty poop. Mm -hmm. And we we started, and then when we had our second kid, we didn't even have the conversation. We didn't even check to see if the cloth diapers would fit. We're like, oh baby, disposable, here we go, and we just uh, and we just do it because honestly, I want to handle poop. It's easy. You know, I I throw it out. There's that there's an actual diaper uh, pickup in in my city, which is which is great, and so uh, so like that makes my life more convenient. But on the recycling episode, we talked about how you don't even recycle; you just stick 
all your stuff in a giant bag and you throw it out. Now, I don't do that. I recycle. But at the same point, I can understand how that would be way more convenient and mm-hmm. easier. Mm-hmm. So a positive of like a disposable culture is it makes it the more disposable, the easier it is. Like paper plates versus cleaning a plate, right? Right. And, and I want to be next because I have a perfect analogy for this. Crofton. I appreciate what you've just said. I think that adequately describes it. And I think the analogy is to think of it this way. Think of it this way. Now, if you looked out your window and saw someone getting mugged, it's an old lady, and some dude ran up, bumped her over, took her purse, ran, you'd grab for your phone and probably call the cops, right? You're a good, you're a good person. I think I know I would. I would have at the very least go out my door to the old lady to see what's going on. Okay. Would you would you do that? Would you both agree to that, please? I feel like I'm being set up as a trap. You are being set up, but not it, it, as a trap. I would, Bo. I'd be right out there. Yeah. I feel I'm like. I feel like right. Yeah. Exactly. You're not being set up as a trap. It's just an analogy to help frame the thing that you said. In, in Bo's, Bo's going to then turn around and be like, "I was the guy that stole from the lady. No. You just turned in a friend." Come on, stop railroad or stop uh, railroad me, um, or hijacking me. Now, picture another scenario. You're in the middle of receiving. Uh, fellatio and it's great and you don't want it to stop and you look out your window and you see that old old lady and she's getting robbed but you're in the middle of like some of the best someone's giving you the best you know your wife let's say is giving you the best fellatio ever you're kind of like well it would be inconvenient to go and do that right now because i'm enjoying myself way too much and it could wait and that's you know when you're like the disposable diapers they're just great i don't think about it it's kind of like i'll pretend i didn't see it she doesn't she doesn't know that that anything's going on no one will be the wiser someone else will take care close of it. the blind close the blind yeah. yeah exactly and that that's 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 what disposable culture to me is at large is just like rationally you look at it and say no no we should repair things and conserve them this is a good value to have but then you do the disposable thing you're like oh this feels good let me just not think about all the consequences. We're innovating. It's capitalism. This is all good. Just let's not think about it. And to me, this analogy sort of encompasses that diaper thing situation or countless other situations that are similar. I can make my own pasta sauce from vegetables that don't come in any containers or I can buy it in a can and throw out 500 cans a year from my pasta sauce or whatever. <laughs> like, true. like. That's and I just like you know what I'm not gonna think about it. Who gives a shit about the landfill and who gives a shit about the smoke put in the air to make the glasses or whatever? Like, fuck it. <laughs> Life's just easier. And I and I'm on this three of us. I'm the most. I think I lack the most guilt. I throw out shit. I don't recycle. Like I'll look at a recycling bin of garbage and have a piece of paper in my hand. And I'll put it in the garbage. Like I'm the worst out of all three of us. But even on some level, you heard it here, folks. I, on some level, I recognize and look. You remember my verdict on recycling, and how I sh- do, how yeah. much you shamed me, and I was shamed into retracting that one verdict in our history of our and show. He, he and, changed his whole behavior following. And that. I feel like recycling is not a far conversation from what we're talking about. So I am taking the stance that like I think it's probably too far. I think he, we dispose. I think it's so, accurate. You know, you 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 are you are right, and. Uh, Bo is right, and and for the record, though Bo has the least shame about throwing all his shit in, into the landfill and all that, I will say that he definitely, amongst the three of us, has for sure the lowest carbon footprint. Absolutely, <laughs> I like how Mike is always saying that about me. <laughs> it's true. Uh, he, Bo has at least he's impacting the world far. Le- he's he can throw all his shit in the garbage bag and throw it in the garbage. I don't recycle, fuck. Uh, and he's still way ahead of us because we both own a car, and. I have a child and you have not one, but two children. And those are the biggest carbon impact things, or just in terms of like using up shit is having kids. He didn't have a kid, you know? And it's like, so Bo is impacting the world far less than I am or than you are. And that's a true fact. And, and the, and the thing I wanted to just, to just, as you Bo was talking, I was like, this is a good time, gentlemen, to remember the three R's, uh, <laughs> which is, which is, and we, cause we did one about recycling. We already talked about that one, but, that's the last one, right? The first one is reduce, which is like don't don't get it, just don't get it. You, you think like I'm gonna start, I need a new thing, and you just think in your head, you know what? I don't really need it. My the headphones I have at home work fine. I'm just gonna go. That's it. Reduce. 
that's the best thing you can ever do is not get the new thing. Reduce your consumption, uh, reduce what you throw out. That's that's the first. And then it's like reuse, obviously, as Bo's dad would say. You know, yes, there's a urine stain on that couch. You'll get used to the smell. Just keep it in your house. And, and it's true, like you're just reusing something not throwing it out and then recycles last obviously and then because if if you if you just embrace recycling it is the argument that you just embrace buying something new all the time you're like well i'll recycle this and then i can now i feel good about it myself i'll go out and buy a brand new thing and it kind of just perpetuates that when you really you got to get back to the first r and be like reduce i feel like there's a fourth <laughs> r i feel like it should be four r's uh reading repair <laughs> <laughs> just read reduce, something reduce reuse and Bo, recycle to credit, and has, repair, <laughs> repair. They, that's the whole point of disposable cultures even in our like reduce reuse recycle conversation we leave out the repair R and yeah there should yeah there could be a repair but that would be maybe reuse reuse would be repair yeah uh, okay and I would it also say that your... uh, remember Bo that famous Twitter post I made a picture of you with a bunch of garbage on the roof of my car, which we picked up. And I think you're sitting on a lovely chair right oh, now. This is a garbage chair that we pulled Fished right out of the of somebody's garbage. front yard. <laughs> doing the world a favor, it, and it's comfy. It, this and chair, wrong with by it. the way, is comfortable. It has a few little patches on it. It was hasn't broken. It's great. I love this chair. It was going to the landfill until Mike encouraged me to pick it out of a garbage. Yeah, so choke on that, Crofton. <laughs> well, it's not against Crofton. I feel like we're. <laughs> like I feel like Crofton feels like he's under attack a little bit from both of us, and I just well, want look you to know at, Crofton. Look at his brand new headphones. Look I at really them. Mint. He's got his 4K Ultra. Yeah, what do you do with your old? Is it 4K ADR headphones? TV. What do you do with your 1080p headphones? <laughs> you know, he's got his brand new phone. I'm slamming to, it here with my iPhone 5S. Next time you buy, I have to stuff. listen to you two bastards in seven. On surround sound. Next time, how next, time that you, is. next time you buy new electronics, can you tell me and I'll get Mike to drive me to your front yard so I can pick your garbage? <laughs> yeah, there's sweet flat screen TVs, <laughs> but they're like they're only 1080p. So it's like Mike, crass, Crofton's got know. a new TV, three new consoles, a new headset, and I'm like, oh sweet, let's go to his house and remember get all of his old shit out of his How garbage. many gaming consoles do you own, Crofton? Do you mean counting the retro ones? Yeah, just all of them. Like counting the older ones that are like would I said how many really games like... consoles? What yeah, did that's you what hear? I mean. All is all. No, but you mean counting the old consoles, the relevant <laughs> yeah, ones. It's still I a use console, them. isn't it? Do I have to count them? Uh, maybe I retract the question. <laughs> yeah, all right, good <laughs> argument. <laughs> I, but that's that we can get into collectors and aficionados yeah, on yeah. another topic. Uh, well, we're uh, uh, sixty minutes into the show, so I think let's uh, get to verdicts here. We can I think. all right to the verdicts, but. Uh, Collectors would be a good topic for the random topic. We did right? collection. We did that already. We did. Do we? Do... Yeah. We're gonna just have to start redoing them from the top. Yeah, we. I remember it now because we. Yeah, I, we have done it. It was a while ago. Uh, all right then, let's uh, bring in the farm animals, uh, otherwise known as our jury, for verdict time. And here they come. <laughs> Order in the court, my gents. Who wants first crack? Who wants last crack? Uh, I'll go first. This one seems easy to me. Yeah, Mike uh, Crofton's muted. <laughs> I just, I just saw mouth the f word. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I said first. But, uh, but oh, well, you... I didn't hear it because he was muted. So I'll no, go. Mike, Mike will go first. Whatever. Whatever. This is a simple one to me. I think disposable culture is bad. It's simple to me, and I think it's okay. I don't want to play the hypocrite game with anyone because that's that's not a game anyone. It's people who who result re, resort to that stuff are like missing the point, where it's like, oh, but you throw stuff out, or, and it's like, yes, because I live in the world. I live in the disposable culture. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. Uh, it, it's it's it, we're stuck. We're kind of stuck in it, and it frustrates me all the time. And even we only touched on it, but even you know, you go and you get a coffee cup or whatever, and you just throw that shit in the garbage way away. That annoys me every time I do it, and I think about it, and I'm just like, what am I supposed to do? But I don't like it, and it's not good. And I'm like, I don't have all the solutions, uh, but it's it's a big it's a big problem. And, and I think that because it is, you know, as the topic implies, uh, it is becoming even more so a cultural thing where everyone just wants a new thing all the time. Be damned the thing you have that's still pretty good. Uh, there's a newer, better one. Why won't, Why don't you get it? Uh, it's just that's a culture that drives like constant waste 
Uh, and also, con- we we're talking about happiness, but constant unhappiness. You know, it's like your friends got the new game console, and you're you've got some old piece of junk from two generations back. Graphics suck. You know, yeah, you <laughs> should feel bad, Hodges. <laughs> it's just like you know that that's this whole game of trying to keep up with people and it's like that's not good and it just it drives us all to feel miserable about ourselves our stuff's not good enough blah 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 and it's destroying the world it's not good for us it's just this is just bad all around and i think it's a pretty simple one and even though we're all hypocrites we're all stuck in it it's okay you know we're of the world we didn't create the world we're just in it you know we can still analyze it and try to acknowledge where things are not correct and make small decisions like reuse or take chairs out of the garbage as Bo, as Bo does. Anyways, that's my, um, I'm a true, I'm a true man of the earth. Bo, he's a, he's a paragon of virtue and a scholar. So, so did uh, you get your sound effect? Yeah, he did at the start. Bad. Uh, I'll, I'll all right. Yeah, you got okay. sound effects. I'll, I'll go next. Uh, so here, here's the thing, like I've been playing devil's advocate on this topic. And one of the reasons I have been is because I actually loathe topics like this that seem to have a foregone conclusion built into the, how they're named. It's very difficult to be like, why is this thing good, right? And I always uh-huh. ask that in every episode. I tried not to today because I sometimes sound like a re- broken record asking. Oh, well, it's, I mean, asking, it's also... A- asking it, that question. It, hard to talk so about. like, I, I just... In this case, look, I tried to find, you know, the, the, the good angle on it, but the more I thought about it, the more I was, I was like, I'm, I, I'm not certain about a lot of things. Like I'm not certain uh, that the, the, the boost in innovation that we're getting due to being a, a, a more disposable culture is not in some way helping us. I know it's doing a lot of damage in many other ways, I'm not sure where it's going to go down the road. I there's there's also like you know when you're talking about getting into those little examples like repairing a shirt and all that sort of stuff. There's the convenience factor. I think that that's that that's beneficial. Um, however, as a whole, and like I'm debating with my as a whole, like b- based on how the topic is sort of spelt out. The idea that like we're focusing solely on the disposal aspect of our human culture on how we throw things out in north america it's very difficult for as as much as i want to stretch to to get to bullshit i i can't see a way to do it like even and and to mike's point about i don't think being a hypocrite on any subject is necessarily a bad a bad thing uh but like uh i would be a big hypocrite on this i do consume a fair amount of things um, and I have to, I do have to agree with Mike and agree with what Bo's likely verdict is going to be to say that, that this is, uh, the, a dis- the disposable culture is bad. <laughs> I was still pulling my verdict together there, That's... guys. It probably came off yeah, disjointed, no, but funny. I, I came in wanting to go bullshit, but the more I talked about it, I was like, fuck I got to say bad. Sure. And, and you're right to say that. I think in this case, and not to, we shouldn't be responding to each other in our verdicts, but you are right to say that it sounds like a pejorative. And I think it is. And maybe there's a better term for it that sounds less pejorative that we just didn't pull. But I can't think of it. <laughs> We've been talking about it for an hour and I can't think of it. Um it's funny because as I said throughout the show, I throw out, I don't own anything that I wouldn't buy instead of replace. And I'm of that culture and my ego is telling me, well, you know, if I'm of the culture, is it bad? Like, where is my moral compass on this thing? And really, um, Crofton said he was playing devil's advocate, but I was very much playing not devil's advocate, but thought exercising it out logically based on a series of values and and i i'm (laughs) i definitely see a lot of bad in it um but at the same time uh i don't know if we all move into the hive mind well then maybe we're less concerned about garbage (laughs) or about these things that we're doing (laughs) if we find a way to transcend these human forms into a form being made of energy and travel throughout the cosmos in this way 
the the mortal, very pedestrian concerns of the Earth environment maybe don't matter that much, and maybe we should be concerning ourselves with the big picture. These are questions I ask and that I don't have answers for. Uh, so because of that, I'm going to say that the disposable culture is bullshit. <laughs> and, you know, I can't completely settle on the bad thing because... I have thoughts that go higher than our mere earthly concerns. And that would be the only reason why. Otherwise, it would well, probably go bad. If that is coming, the hive mind, it's, it's a ways off, though. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure Don't it is. It'll I'm be so happy I said bad now. Like, if I... <laughs> I was... Oh! Uh... Also, just a quick... When we were talking about Tesla, I just because this occurred to me, because, like, Elon Musk, I have a pet peeve with Elon Musk. You know so how he's big on... the earth right now. Well, right. yeah, because he's kind of, like, sort of... You know, he, people have made a joke that he he would be a Bond villain. Like, you look at him and what he's yeah, doing, yeah. like, he's for sure a Bond villain. <laughs> Anyways, he, wa- he wants to... So he, he's big on colonizing Mars. And his reason is, like, is like because we're going to destroy the Earth. And I'm just like, fuck you, Elon Musk. <laughs> like, fix the goddamn Earth. Stop making cars. Like, do something. Put your money towards real good. He's like, no, we got to go live on Mars. Like, Mars is not good. You won't like it. It's garbage. <laughs> Yeah, it's highly Good. it's highly corrosive and hostile to. It's human, a terrible place and until tissue. Elon Musk gets there and fixes it. Right. Yeah, I think he's got no concept of time because like, <laughs> his mind is on bigger things. Like the honest answer is not the marketable one that is Pierre Handler saying was probably like these earthly concerns matter very little to me. We just need to get to Mars. So you I'll know say he whatever, doesn't right? sleep like he sleeps on the floor of his factory and like it's get you off to Mars. He's a Bond villain. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a Bond villain. Speaking of Bond villains, Crofton, I think. Uh, oh yeah, there's a I'm Bond, the host, right? There's a Bond villain or two out there that may wish to write into us and tell us about yes. their plans. Thank you, Bo. Uh, so, if you have opinions on if our culture is disposable, and if so, do you think that's a good thing, a bad thing, a bullshit thing? Send us an email, goodbadbull at gmail dot com. Also, uh, we stream the show live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash goodbadbull. Uh, if you want to find out when that happens, follow us on Twitter at goodbadbull. Get all the updates there. Uh, you can also uh, visit our goodbadbull.com website. Find all the archives of hundreds of episodes. Um, get, your, uh, get your fix if you're a new listener. And uh, we are all individuals, individual natures. So uh, without further ado, gentlemen, where can the fine folks reach you, Bo? Uh, (laughs) You can find me at Bo Schwartz on Twitter. And if there's anything that isn't disposable, wait, no, tweets are highly disposable. Well, enjoy the disposable nature of tweeting on Twitter at Bo Schwartz. That is all. Oh, and uh, Mike, Mike, where can the people reach you? Oh, uh, they can get in touch with me through the Twitter, which I'll be tweeting back while my phone is simultaneously plugged into a charger because it's about to die all the time. But I refuse to get a new one because I'm trying to reduce, you know, my consumption. Crofton. Nice. Crofton, you make me sick. I'm just going to throw out this empty plastic <laughs> bottle. Uh, I could u- reuse it tomorrow as my water bottle, but I think I'm just going to Or a convenient it. urinal while you're on the go. Yeah. Well, I've already filled up a couple of bottles during the show. Um, and uh, you can reach me on Twitter, at Croft and Steers. Uh, and uh, support my new show, Diapers and Dungeons. Dungeons and Diapers. God damn it, I've got to get that right. Uh, <laughs> I think it's good. This is a good meme. It's a good, it's, it'll be a good thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's just two words, Crofton. Um, and uh, yeah, you can... Uh, you, actually, I should give you the address. Uh, so it's uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> is it diapersanddungeons.com? Yeah. Uh, drivers. <laughs> Which is so it? it's uh, okay. It's the gamers in presents slash okay, TGI studios.com slash DND. TGI studios.com slash DND. Uh, you can also just follow me on Twitter and I'll tell you when there's new episodes coming out. So, uh, awesome. uh yeah. I'm super horrible at promotion, apparently. But I mean, you know, if you want to find it, they can go to their <laughs> I iTunes. I thought you were a communications expert. They can go to I their iTunes app right now, the Google Play Store. 
and subscribe directly by searching. I found it today. I subscribed this morning. I just typed in in my iTunes store, Dungeons and Diapers, and boom, it was there. So, and that's how you say it too. Jeez, Bo, can I hire you to be promotion? I I was uh, I wanted to make some kind of joke because um, you were doing some promotion about your new podcast, and I was like I was like in my head I was like maybe Crofton has started a new podcast to get his head around this marketing plan thing so that he could finally come through for GBB <laughs> with his long long overdue marketing plan. Uh, it'd be hilarious. The it'd be hilarious if like the show had like the best marketing plan in the universe and it you know takes off and makes a second income so crofton can be even more disposable with like he's like i got i bought it i threw out my old switch and bought a new switch just because i like the color of this one better <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, i'd be like damn it you didn't tell me so i could pick your garbage you're like oh sorry uh, my, i had to, i had to charge my new tesla three times on the way over <laughs> I'm getting a new one. Well, that would be yeah, Mike's okay. Tesla. Mike has a 50 year old Tesla. He's got to just basically keep corded up the whole way. He drives around town. Run wire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can go 100 feet from the home. Uh, you just go to I a convenience just, store, like... you bring the plug in, you'd be like, uh, I'd like to buy uh, you know, a chocolate bar and I need to plug it in while I'm here. I just like the huge di- di- discrepancy where I pull up my Tesla four switches eat eat one in each of the new colors and then i open the window and mike's there with his rag shirt just coming out, you know, <laughs> yeah coming off and i'm like mikey that shirt looks like it's seen better days and you're like oh no it's still good oops there it goes now it's rag <laughs> it's funny Crofton, i see i often see, often see you in a, a lot of new clothes too it's it's funny that mike brings up the holy shirts because he's often wearing hobo clothes and <laughs> It's true. And I'm like, I don't often see Crofton in hobo clothes. I mean, what happens no. to his, his, his homeless like gear? Does it get thrown out? Is it put in the trunk? I he walks it's downtown and holds a bag of clothes in front of a homeless person <laughs> while he stuffs it into a garbage can right in front of him. You see this ACDC church shirt? I bought this at Zeller's for $12. Ze- and yeah. I want to... I want to point out that Zeller's has been closed for a significant amount of yeah. years. Yeah. Jesse wants me to go through my t-shirts and start disposing because that I've just, I've, I've had the same, I I just pile and I'll buy new t-shirts, but I won't get rid of the old ones. I don't understand how mine literally turn into rags. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not even kidding. You, I don't really sweat. You work though. and do physical activity. Yeah. Oh and yeah, you, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's a <the> key. <laughs> <laughs> if you just sit in your clothes, they actually don't rip unless you accidentally rip them up. And I, yeah, I do end up Sitting sweating. Does nothing to them. <laughs> they just I'll survive. Yeah, you're like I like how you even explained it in your story. You're like at one point I start using them for work, and then it's yeah. like okay, yeah. it's yeah. all down. And your work isn't like oh let me walk over here. It's like there's nails and yeah, you're lifting stuff and wood and, and cement and like coarse surfaces and stone <laughs> I, like, you know i do like how like if any first time listener is listening to this show they've they've heard a story of mike and his his shirt that's ripped off and turned to a rag and Bo it is hold in his pants with the giant hole in it and then I, switching I, to board shorts with a string or whatever I'm, I'm and they're just like right god crofton's the only one who's got his shit together <laughs> <laughs> but oh, then you cool. talk about your 20 year old acdc shirt it's true is it it can't be i i bought it at the zellers on the uh on spark street which oh, yeah uh, that one held out longer than most i think it, yeah so meh. yeah yeah the employees there were very <laughs> depressing just because of the stark... Maybe because they work at Zellers. But it's also because of the stark difference in affluence because the people because that was in a government part of town where people were working for very good wages and usually very well dressed in their lunchtime. And you had, you know, some schmuck making five bucks an hour. You know what I mean? It's just like a stark, like, I always felt sort of grimy in there. Yeah. And yeah. Anyways, Buying your, your shit that you know you're going to throw out in disposable five days. Culture. And everything those. you buy at Zellers, you basically throw it unless you're crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck finding a, a spot to end the show, Bo. Well, it's like every episode. You guys, yeah. you assholes won't let me do a formal thing to so make my life easier. Yeah, we can do know. that sometime. I, I'm starting to turn around on the formal thing. I think. I mean, we've done it a... like 200 times. Like, it's a shtick that nobody <laughs> cares about. Uh, <laughs> like, let's just, let's just be like, thanks for listening. On behalf of Mike and Crofton, my name is Bo. Thank you.
<laughs> you know, uh, we yeah. wish you a good, bad, or bullshit, or some. We come up with a catchy little thing. I've been watching The Breakfast Club, which is an actual radio show, but also the the YouTube. It's like a hip hop thing. It's really interesting, actually. Wow. I only think about the '80s television uh, movie of the same. No, name. I know, but they're called the Breakfast Huge. Club. It's it's Charlemagne the God. That's the T H A the God. It's a uh, um, oh shit, what's her name? Cam, Yee Yee. Can't it's not. I always want to say Amanda Yee, but it's not Amanda Yee. I don't know what you're talking about. It's right the now. hosts. There's DJ Envy, <laughs> Charlemagne the God, and Angela Yee. It's Angela Yee. They're all like about the hip hop, and they usually have hip hop guys. But what's funny is their personalities. It's like, it's not because I'm super into like the hip hop culture, but I love watching these hosts mess with the, with the people that they're interviewing. They're like super personable and funny. And then they have like interesting hosts sometimes on like Kathy Griffin. They just did an interview with her and they talked about how Donald Trump was blackballing her. Anyways, not to get too deep into it, but they have a sign off at the end of the interview. DJ Envy goes, this is the Breakfast Club, good morning. And then they just close it right out with like a hip-hop beat. And it's like super, you know, I've watched like 80 or 100 of these interviews now. And it's like, it's the cue, you know, it's the jam. And I'm like, hmm. and then we <laughs> should do I that. I think about good, we bad, or bullshit. It's like, blah, 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 with... blah, 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 I feel blah. like, I feel like ours would be, it's, it, the cue would tend, it would be as, as a, uh, when every episode with me saying, uh, Crofting, you make me sick. And, and then, <laughs> and then I'm going to end it. Just, or, or, Honestly, I'd be it, okay with it. Anything would be better than what we're doing right now. Just it, in terms of how, how about, time. how about, okay. This is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. It seems to work for that other show. It'd yeah, funny, I mean, like, if it works for if them, we were on there, it, If we'd be for... funny, we're not a morning show, though, so the good, like, there's no context other than I, you somehow I, yeah, jabbing it. I think me. you missed it. Yeah. All we'll right, think Jen, about it. We don't have to um, have the answer right now, but next episode, let's do a sign off. All right, it can be short and sweet. Let's work on it. I don't care if it's the same person that does it every time with the hosting duties, you know, rotating. I don't care if it's the same person or not. Just it'd be nice. It, it would actually save me a lot of time. We're not going to agree on what it is. I know it should just be like I'm gonna. Says, I'm gonna be pretty flexible on this because I value zing. my time greatly. No, it should be just like okay, Bo, end the show here. That's what it should just be, and then and <laughs> okay. be that. Okay. As soon as someone says that, you can say it yourself. I'm Bo. This is where the show ends. All right, the show's fucking Bo, over. All end right, the show right now. So wait, I mean, if we didn't already go for an hour, I'd say whoever gets the most frustrated, probably me, should just say that we're in. It's like a, it's like a BDSM safe word. It's like okay, show's fucking over and just fucking end. <laughs> show ends here. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then the, instead ends. of bringing up the music, it's just cause this is the hard cut to the music and out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Thanks for letting me plug my other podcast so extensively. Oh, we should do that next time too. We'll we'll give it a we'll give it a bit of a run here. I mean, you know, oh, at I the end of every episode, podcast. you can let people know. You, now Seriously, just... you should guess though. Yeah. Okay. Um, I expect but, to be uh, on at some point. You gotta have yeah. a kid, huh? It's you expect part. to be on? I do. No, no. Or Bo you... said he wants to be on. I he expect he... I'll be invited at some point. Well, do you have I a mean. Parenting? I guess I guess we could have a Bo get appearance or not. That's fine. <laughs> it would no, just I'm be not. like I'm just, I'm just being a dick to my friends. all this free time. Uh, I'm should, like so so Bo. Um, you should definitely ask what's Scott. It like? though. You should definitely tell what's Ryan it? to ask Scott if he'll do it. Oh, I yeah no, I could we could ask Scott sometime. He's a grandfather. It'd be an interesting. He is. Does so. he walk with a cane? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> Uh, no, for sure. It's my mental image of a grandfatherly figure. Yeah, uh, mine is one with a rotted foot. I'll be, I'll be like, so Scott, how do you balance all this stuff? And he'll be like, I get my kids to do podcasts with me, and then when they're done, I make them edit them. And I was like, mm. huh, interesting. No, Bo, can you end that. the show here? Yeah. Oh, all right. it's already <laughs> fucking over. I, I think we're gonna start with that. <laughs> I think show's sure fucking throw- over is a good whoever says it first. <laughs> After the emails are given out, as soon as that whole shtick is done, whoever gets to it first. And I it, think it may sound like closer, it, we get to our it closure should be like I wish there was a throttle button. Somebody should say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, throttle. <laughs> That's been a good ongoing know. joke. That's a good All one. Right. Too. What I've, yeah. I've enjoyed. So I'm gonna go play Spider Man. <laughs> show's fucking over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make sure to pause every now and then to cry about Carlson. 
Oh, I wish you had Why does he keep needling you, dude? All right, hang on. Chat room, thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to close up the stream here and um, send us your feedback on how you think we should close the show because you've got a great idea. We'll totally just use that and true. not our idea. Yeah, it's true. So thank Come you. Come up with a good idea. And Maybe you, somebody gives crap. I bid you good night.